The NTSB preliminary report is out on the Lear 35 that crashed in Scottsdale, Arizona back on the 10th of February, killing the pilot. As we saw in the first video, the left landing gear failed on landing, failing right at the top of the strut. It's not often that we get accidents caused by maintenance errors, but this one was. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. We're having a little audio problems today, so I had to steal Pete's gaming microphone. So bear with me until I get yet another new microphone to replace the broken microphone. The amazing new details in this report is that there were photographs taken of the jet before it landed indicating that the left main landing gear shown here was already broken before the jet even landed. And apparently the, the captain got his three green lights. He indicated no problem that he had a gear problem, even with the gear dangling, the left main gear dangling like this. This was taken, I believe, out on the golf course, and this gear is dangling down so low and twisted backwards that the landing light that is mounted on the landing gear is reflecting underneath the wing. So when this pilot touched down in Scottsdale, he had no idea the shape that gear was in. Here's a good time-lapse photo showing the Learjet sliding into the Gulfstream Challenger jet seriously injuring one of the people or one person that was inside the parked jet. And as was suspected in the first video, this whole sequence of events started when this very same jet, flown by the very same crew, suffered a hard landing in McAllister, Oklahoma, back, we, I, we said Arkansas, it was apparently Oklahoma, back on the 20th of June, a landing that was so hard it flattened some of the tires. As a result, the mechanics had to do a hard landing inspection, and as a result of that inspection, they had to take the main landing gear apart and do an eddy inspection of the landing gear and check for cracks. And it was in the process of putting this landing gear back together where their problems began. So when investigators checked out the landing gear that was left there on the runway, we saw that on the first uh, video, we see that the landing gear is separated from the spar and the bolt that is to bolt the landing gear onto the trunnion pin, it, the bolt is through, but is not attached to the pin. Let me show you. Now, this is not the first time this has happened in Learjet maintenance history. This is apparently the third time. And so here's the wing spar located right here. Remember, these landing gear retract parallel to the wing. So here's the aft trunnion pin. And here is the trunnion casting, the top of the landing gear. When you put this landing gear back together, you're supposed to offer up the, well, you put this part, the forward part of the gear together first, and then you offer up the gear to the trunnion pin. You slide the trunnion pin into the trunnion, and then you temporarily mount a bolt right through here to check the adjustments of these shims located right here that the clearances are correct on the shim stack for this aft trunnion pin. Then you remove your temporary bolt, right located right here, and put in the retaining bolt. This retaining bolt has a zerk fitting, so you can grease up the fitting so the gear can swivel nicely on the trunnion pin. And that pin has to go through this hole in the aft trunnion pin. And then it gets uh, the striker plate and the nut, castellated nut and cotter key on the other side to secure the whole thing. But at the accident site, they found the retaining bolt and striker plate, castellated nut and cotter pin all together, but the, the aft trunnion pin was still mounted in the rear spar. And they found an excessive amount of grease around the aft end of the trunnion pin and there was a mention by the mechanic when he put the thing back together, he said, boy, it sure seemed to use an awful lot of grease. Well, it looks like he slid the bolt ahead of the trunnion pin, never getting the bolt to go through the trunnion pin. Instead, it was just ahead of it, never fastening the gear to the trunnion pin. And this jet had flown all the way. They don't know how many flights it had since that maintenance there in Oklahoma, on this flight, the jet had come from uh, Florida to, I believe, Austin, Texas, and then to this final landing here in Scottsdale. So the gear was never bolted correctly to the aft trunnion pin. In other words, if this is the aft trunnion pin, the bolt was never 
fed through the aft trunnion pin like this and secured. Instead, the aft trunnion pin was out a little bit and the bolt missed the trunnion pin altogether and was assembled just ahead of it, never connecting the two parts. And the gear was just pivoting on this little bit of trunnion pin ahead of the hole until it finally came apart. And so when you go to grease it, the grease goes into the retaining pin and just pukes out all over the side of the aft trunnion pin and extrudes itself out the back side of the spar, the side that the mechanic probably never looked at as he was doing this portion of the job. So we're still not clear if the pilot had a three green indication or an unsafe indication on the landing gear, but there's three green lights, three red lights, but the pilot didn't say anything on the radio indicating he had any sort of a gear problem and he went ahead and landed as if he didn't have any sort of gear problem. The gear was in the down position and the inboard landing gear doors are what trigger the unsafe lights and the inboard landing gear doors were in the closed position but the one on the left was not quite in the fully closed position. So the idea with the inboard landing gear doors is they open up, the gear comes out, and then the inboard door go doors close to clean this area up aerodynamically while the gear is down. So if those inboard doors are closed, you will not get an unsafe gear indication. So it looks like the pilot touched down on speed just a little bit long, but at the correct location. And had this pilot known that he had an unsafe gear indication, he, first he would have said something on the radio, and secondly, he more than likely would have gone somewhere else to deal with an unsafe gear indication. But because he didn't know, he went ahead and landed anyways, and as you saw in the video, that left gear just folded up as soon as he touched down. And as unfortunate, well, a couple of very fortunate things, even though the pilot lost his life, there was no post-crash fire, and this... Challenger jet right here prevented this aircraft from careening into the FBO that was full of people at the time that this accident occurred. Details matter, especially when it comes to that detailed maintenance work here in aviation. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.